Hello, everyone. My name is Katie Claiborne, and I'm here with my coworker, Tanjean Panna. We're from City Block Health. Uh, today, we're going to share a story of how we've improved the reliability and orchestration of our analytics pipeline using DBT. So for a little bit about us, Tanjean and I are members of the platform engineering and data analytics teams at CityBlock, respectively. More specifically, Tanjean is CityBlock's first site reliability engineer, which means that he collaborates with our team to automate development workflows uh, with goals of self-sufficiency and velocity. More generally, CityBlock partners with insurance plans to deliver primary care uh, with a focus on social determinants of health in addition to more traditional medical outcomes or indicators. When they're out in the field, our care teams use Commons, which is our proprietary web app, to document our members' health. Um, so given this context, I wonder if we could throw it to the chat and ask you all why an analytics pipeline might be important to CityBlock. Customer acquisition could be. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, for us, the three main goals are, are really, um, one, to understand our members' health um, when, when we first start working with them. Two, to understand how well we're executing our care model according to its design. And then three, to try to, to tie those two things together to understand what effect our care model is having on our, on our members' health and, and um, hopefully how we're able to, uh, to help them. In any case, it's, it was the need for a reliable analytics pipeline that led us to DBT, and Tanjin was there when we got started. Thanks, Katie. Um, so CityBlock started using DBT last June. Um, so we're pretty much at our one year anniversary right now. Um, and the uh, transition to using it uh, represented a major step in our maturity as an analytics team. So over here at the top, you can see a picture of a few key MVPs. Um, we have Tommy on the left over there and Spencer on the right. And it was myself. Um, I was a data engineer back then. Um, so for the first time, we had a robust purpose-built system uh, for the version control of our SQL transformations. Um, DBT gave us an effective way to uh, manage the dependencies across source tables and analytic models, um, as well as a solution for materializing complex queries as tables. We also, um, at this time, introduced some orchestration, um, namely through Airflow. So our first specific like DBT DAG was done with a Kubernetes pod operator, um, which you know, uh, folks familiar with how GitLab does their DBT ops may know. Um, and it simply just did a DBT run with a bunch of models tagged as nightly, uh, representing nightly models that needed to be run. So it was run on a daily cadence. Um, this was deployed in uh, July, so basically a month after we adopted DBT, and it's been running since. Um, this is a great start. And, um, you know, Katie, um, do you want to talk more about the state of things um, after we fast forward a few months? Also, at this point, I, I do want to highlight um, uh, the picture below, Mariano, which Katie will talk about, she was actually a, um, a staff data scientist at uh, Bowery Farming um, prior to joining CityBlock. So yeah, DBT, <laughs> DBT runs in our roots, I guess. Yes, definitely. Um, in, in the past few months, I'd say we've had the opportunity to reevaluate and consolidate what's been a growing project. Um, we built many models in a short amount of time and we've started to feel the strain of maintenance costs associated with, um, with keeping those models up to date with, with a changing product um, and new data sources. So we're really lucky to have partners like Tanjin on the engineering team, as well as Mariana on the data science team to really push us to bring more discipline into our development workflow. Uh, for us, that's meant um, introducing more documentation, more testing, and more automation. Um, today, we're really going to focus on um, incorporating continuous integration into our development workflow. But to set some context, let's take a quick look at the stack to understand where we started to feel some of these growing pains. 
So right here, you guys can see essentially a system architecture diagram of the data flows going on at CityBlock. Um, as an overview, our team uses DBT with BigQuery as our database connection. Um, we are essentially a GCP shop. Um, and uh, in these data pipelines, uh, these various data pipelines here, I want to draw your attention um, to an important start, which is the Postgres SQL database um, that you see on the uh, upper left. Thanks, Katie. Um, which is uh, essentially the data backend for uh, the Commons app Katie mentioned earlier. So there's a lot of activity going on here, right? Our care team members are going in, updating information, putting in information, removing information. Um, and this database in particular gets mirrored. Um, there's a copy of it that's done in a nightly cadence to BigQuery through Airflow, right? That's that um, arrow right there going to the right, the nightly copy. Um, but we also have other processes, you know, such as like external data sources, um, streaming sources for electronic health records and health information exchanges, like the one you see below, um, it's a bit grayed out. Um, and that's like also delivered into BigQuery via Airflow and through various cadences um, into our soft, you know, chewy BigQuery center. Um, and then from there, uh, uh, so, so for this presentation, we will focus mostly on comments. And once things are in BigQuery, namely the commons uh, nightly copy, um, the DBT transformations are off to the races, which um, you know Katie will talk about. That's right. Um, so from BigQuery, at which point the data is, is in the domain of the, the data analytics and data science teams, there are, are really two destinations for us. One is uh, into Looker which we use as our business intelligence platform at CityBlock. Um, I wonder if, if people could just throw in the chat what other BI tools are represented on the call. Tableau, Metabase, Power BI, Tableau. Nice, nice. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, so for us, um, the, the DBT models are, are generating source tables in BigQuery that then uh, support the foundation for, for content that our operations teams can create in Looker. The second destination is actually back into Commons itself. So um, we are transforming data through our DBT models, we're deriving insights, and then we're sending some of that data back into the app um, to be re-ingested uh, to power particular features. Um, so this is where we started. We had multiple pieces of automation in place, although as we'll find, those pieces weren't necessarily tied together. So next we'll talk about what happened uh, when this started to go wrong. And the reality was that, that many of our days started with a message that no analyst wants to see, and that is, good morning, dashboards are stale, um, which our colleague Wilson uh, alerted us to multiple times throughout <laughs> the first few months of this year. Um, and, and the end of last year. Um, and these were really humbling to receive, to, to realize that we didn't have our own alerting system in place, um, but rather we had to react uh, to these user, user messages um, coming from the very people we were, were supposed to be serving. Um, and a message like this would, would kind of send our team into a frantic, uh, like I said, reactive troubleshooting mode, um, where we tried to figure out had the nightly copy failed, had our DBT transformations failed, did both fail, why? Um, and really the root issue here was that the nightly transformation job had become unreliable and uncoordinated. On the reliability side, we didn't have a process for continuous integration and instead relied entirely on human review. Um, which again, in a, in a growing project, became less feasible. Um, there were more cases where we, we missed something in the course of, rev of review. We might merge a pull request, come in the next day to find that the nightly job had failed. Perhaps it was something simple like a column name that we missed or um, something trickier to predict like a permissions issue. The second problem was that there wasn't a, an explicit relationship between the nightly copy the transformation and the downstream products. So for all of the airflow pinwheels we showed you in this slide, these were all operating independently um, without knowledge of, of what the others were up to, um, whether um, 
preceding steps had succeeded or failed. Um, everyone was just going off on its own schedule based on uh, our own rough estimates of when we thought the dependent steps might finish. The result of these two problems was that dashboards were often stale for end users and our transformations might run even if the nightly copy had failed. So these were essentially pointless runs that were going over stale data. At this point, Tanjin stepped in with a couple of ideas of how we could approach these two issues. Thanks, Katie. Um, so let's just get into some of the nitty gritty of this. Um, so we use um, GitHub um, with a mono repo that essentially has a dbt subdirectory, which um, our dbt developers like Katie um, spend quite a bit of time in. So that's just some background information. Um, that's where all the models live essentially inside that dbt subdirectory. So to address the unreliability um, component of things, we essentially added a check in our the source code component. So this was manifested as a GitHub check. Um, so you can see on this picture on the right, um, a sample PR where this is highlighted, uh, specifically that um, a blue box over there at the bottom where it says trigger and then some hash over there. Um, that's done through Google Cloud Build, which is our uh, CI CD uh, continuous integration, continuous uh, delivery deployment tool that we use. You can imagine we're big fans of Google Cloud. Um, and the way it works is, um, you know, a DBT developer like Andrew, our colleague Andrew here, um, creates a pull request. And then based on what's in that PR, for example, uh, some, some DBT models that were either changed or introduced, um, we need to do a staging run in a BigQuery staging project. And the way you trigger that run is through the slash GCB run command, as you can see at the top there. What that does is it triggers a build um, in Google Cloud Build. I um, mean, that's like the picture at the bottom. You see like the steps that are right there. Um, you know, grab, uh, there's like four steps. Grab the credentials, clone the repo, uh, find the models to run, only run the models we care about that were changed in the PR and you know do the dbt run itself in this case you saw it took a bit over six minutes to complete the run and it was a success great um but if things go wrong if the dbt uh, if the dbt run fails um we still you know ultimately this is written to a big query staging project so that is always available to the um analytics team so you can see that at the top over there um you know the cbh uh, dash analytics dash staging uh, BigQuery um, data sets, which contains the outputs of these models. So if something fails, of course, the cloud build uh, 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 page would tell you it failed, as well as the GitHub uh, pull request page. But you can actually go into the models, um, into the tables, views, or whatever themselves, and see what the what the what the actual thing wrong is. So yeah, this was this was um, this was uh, this was essentially once again just a GitHub PR check um, with cloud build and BigQuery staging project. <clears throat> Um, so for the coordination side of things, I know we're using Airflow and you may be wondering, well, why are things even disconnected? I thought Airflow solved that. Um, so real quick, just let's just step back for those that aren't aware of Airflow. Um, in Airflow, um, we have like the concept of a DAG, right? So a DAG stands for, it's, a, it's an acronym for a directed acyclic graph. It's a collection of all the tasks you want to run organized in a way that reflects their relationships and dependencies. Um, so yeah, once again, uh, that sounds like it solves this uncoordinated problem, um, uncoordination issue that we were having. Um, you know, just to step back, like these DAGs that we've mentioned, um, specifically around the DBT nightly run, specifically around the mirroring of the commons database, the, the copy of it, um, they were sort of developed in isolation um, in order to like, um, um, uh, uh, you know, just essentially bring out these features and make them available. So they weren't exactly connected. And in order to preserve that idea of, you know, the DAGs being um, isolated and as well as connect them at the same time, we utilize the external task sensor, which is um, something provided out of the box in Airflow. Um, so you can see these two uh, uh, pictures on the left here. There are two independent DAGs. One is called DBT Nightly at the top. The one at the bottom is called Load Panel Management Data, just essentially um, some ETL process uh, uh, I believe it's a Python process. I could be wrong. Um, that, that sort of depends on, um, sorry, I think I'm hearing some echo. Uh, anyway, 
Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an ETL process that runs after the DBT uh, job. So, so what, what we did was we put the external task sensor in front of the um, DAGs themselves, and we made them wait upon one another in order to uh, trigger them. Essentially, the, the external task sensor would have like a timeout, and we put a rough estimate on how long we expect the upstream task to complete. Uh, this allowed us to still continue to isolate these DAGs in a manner that makes sense, although, you know, of course, in an ideal world, they would all be one mega DAG. Um, so now when failures occur, we're able to now proactively alert the looker and the commons user of stale data. Um, and we also have, uh, those er errors do come up and we just have the um, explicit like uh, call outs, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the errors themselves as to what particularly went wrong in this entire ETL process. So that's essentially the uh, picture on the right with a Slack alert from Airflow saying, oh yes, this DAG. Uh, failed for this reason, and then the um, on-call engineer can essentially go and debug. That's right. And as a result of these two efforts, our transformation jobs are failing less frequently, which is great. Um, and when they do fail, we're able to proactively communicate to our end users. So rather than receiving a message in that dashboard feedback channel um, from one of our users, Instead, um, an on-call engineer like Rohan here at the bottom is able to send out a message when we know that something has gone wrong, thanks to those airflow alerts that are coming in through Slack. Um, so not only are we able to, to tell users that um, something went wrong in this process, but because we also know right away at which step uh, we had a failure, we can give them a rough idea of how long it will take to resolve the issue. Um, so this is great. We have increased confidence in, um, in this pipeline as it's flowing. Um, based on some rough math, we've gone from a success rate of about 85% up to closer to 90 plus. Um, and that has meant that we've actually been able to increase the frequency at which we run this process. So rather than running it only once a day or every 24 hours, uh, the commit here in the top right-hand portion of the screen is when we bumped that up to every 12 hours. So we're running the process twice a day, uh, which means that our teammates have um, data whose staleness has, has essentially been cut in half. So our lessons here aren't, aren't really groundbreaking, but they have been big steps uh, forward in the development of our own team. Um, so we've learned that automating pre-merge checks um, results in fewer failures of, of our transformation job. That means a better experience for um, our internal clients who depend on these data products, as well as greater peace of mind for ourselves as developers, as um, authors and reviewers on pull requests. It's nice to know that, that there is a check standing behind you if, if there's something that you miss. Secondly, we've learned that explicitly linking related steps makes it easy to identify and resolve issues in the pipeline. Um, and for us, being proactive has, has really made us better partners um, with those teams we're working with across the company. Um, but we're not finished, and Tanjin has some ideas of what we'd like to tackle next. Oops. Sorry, thanks, Katie. Uh, so for starters, we would like to extend the automation that we showed in the GitHub PR check to a post-merge um, uh, capability. So this essentially means our production runs would be automated. Right now they're still manual, um, you know, uh, dependent on the DPT developers. So it's just taking the work we've done thus far and just applying it in the production environment. Um, we also want to be a bit more nuanced with our orchestration by tying specific models to their source data um, and, you know, developing processes around that as opposed to just slapping a tag on it and, and calling it a day. Because, um, you know, you can imagine that can get uh, unmaintainable as we scale and add more models. Um, we would also like more coverage of the various data sources that are fed into DBT. Um, this talk has been about commons um, and that Postgres merit, but there are others. And, you know, as we, as we continue to scale and work with more insurance partners, we will have even more to um, uh, take into account. 
And the last thing is we really want to utilize the DBT test feature more. We are running it, we are using it, um, but only at a very surface level and you know, with things like distinct counts, but there are definitely capabilities there that we would like to explore and dig deeper into and make as a part of our um, production runs. Um, so yeah, I mean, our team's use of DBT will continue to evolve just like it has in the past year. And who knows, maybe we'll be back next year to tell you about what we've done uh, since uh, from, from here on out. Um, just uh, one last question to ask to the team, just to populate into the chat, which is, um, um, uh, we're curious to hear how do you automate your DBT models, whether it's like through DBT Cloud, Circle CI, you know, your laptop, um, <laughs> whatever, uh, some other tool. Um, it would be cool if you guys can mention that. Lots of lots of DBT cloud. Yeah, uh, being a healthcare company with like you know HIPAA compliance being a thing, um, we were hesitant to like jump into the DB cloud, DBT cloud world um, with a hosted service. But you know what? Maybe we'll look into it and see if we can get get it set up. Um, I'm sure Claire would be happy to talk to us about that. Awesome. Thanks again, everybody. Um... Before we open it up to further questions, I saw a couple pop in. We will just mention shamelessly that we are hiring, um, particularly for a principal engineer to lead our telemedicine platform. That's the link here, along with our contact info. Um, and we'd be happy to, to chat uh, if there are things people want to dig into in more detail. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, that was incredible. Um, yeah, I definitely empathize with that. Uh, the dashboards are stale messages coming in and, you know, in losing half a day trying to fix it or just figure out what went wrong. Um, and so to go from that to actually being the one to tell your stakeholders, hey, this dashboard's a stale, we're on top of it. Amazing turnaround. So really great work um, to your team. And also thank you so much for sharing the journey with us. So uh, we do have some questions in the chat. Um, Sean from Warby Parker, um, are you available to, to ask your question? Yes, of course, Claire. Oh, hi, Sean. Hi, good to see you. Uh, thanks, sir. Thanks so much for the great presentation. It was, uh, you know, you showed your challenges, and uh, that's, that's amazing. Um, so my question is about that first part um, of copying the Postgres to um, BigQuery, and I wanted to know more how you did it. Um, we also do it, but we find it very challenging. So I just wanted to hear more about that. Yeah, um, great question. Um, uh, just a shout out to CityBlocks Talent. Our current CTO is actually the previous CTO from Warby Parker. So it's crazy how you know small the world can be sometimes. Uh, Lon Binder. Um, anyway, uh, so to answer your question, um, so we do that through um, essentially a uh, Shio job. So Shio is a um, uh, managed. Uh, sorry, we use Dataflow to to copy the Postgres table into um, uh, BigQuery. Uh, Dataflow is a managed uh, data processing service on Google Cloud. Once again, we love Google Cloud. And Shio is just essentially like a Scala wrapper around the Apache Bean API, which um, Dataflow sort of operates off of. Um, I do notice that uh, one of our other engineers, Rohan Aledi, is in the call, um, is in this chat right now. He is the one that actually wrote that job. So, um, you know, you, can, you guys can definitely chat uh, more about that like the, the details around that. Yep, there he is. Hey, Rohan. Thanks for writing that job. <laughs> awesome. Um, and we have another question uh, from John Lynch from Updata. John, are you available to ask, um, ask your question? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Um, again, thank, thanks for doing the, the talk. Um, it, was, it was interesting to hear how you, I'm especially interested in the Airflow DBT part, so it was cool to see how um, you all are setting that up, but I, I am curious specifically on the, the transform part, are you running all of your DBT transforms in a single airflow DAG or are you splitting them up into multiple DAGs? And I'm particularly curious because we're, we're thinking about this right now and we're trying to figure out if we should have individual tasks for DBT models so we can more easily retry things when they fail. Mm. That's a really good question. I'd say we're, we're somewhere in between. Um, we have one main job, which is what we talked about here today, that, that runs the majority of models. 
um, on the same cadence as the, the copy from Postgres. Um, that's just because commons data is, is such a crucial source for us and it's, it's changing very rapidly. We have started to, um, to break up um, other models that need to be run less frequently or are tied to very specific data sources. Um, and those are living in smaller DAGs that run um, on the cadence that makes sense for, for the given context. Um, and that's, I think, the pattern that we'd like to lean toward going, uh, going forward, um, just so that we are being explicit about when we want things to run and why. Cool, yeah, thank you. 